Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video we will be installing Gluster FS to support storage for our Docker Swarm lab that we've been building. Now if you need to uh, catch up with where we're at, so this is the second episode that's part of our Docker Swarm lab series that I'm doing. So if you're keen to understand where we're at and how we've configured everything, uh, I would suggest go watching the first episode. In the previous episode, I just cover setting up the Raspberry Pis uh, for Docker Swarm and configuring them as nodes for within the cluster. So what we we're at now and the reason for installing cluster FS and why we need it and whatnot, we'll cover that now. So, so generally when we're dealing with Docker and you have volumes and whatnot, everything's kind of conf confined to the one machine, right? The one Raspberry Pi in this case. And within there, you'll have your container and it will have its volume or its binding or whatever it needs to talk to for its storage, okay? Now, when we use Docker Swarm, there is no out-of-the-box solution for persistent storage across, across your Swarm services. And I don't know why that is. I've kind of looked into it. But the idea is that it's something you come up with yourself. That solution is on you to come up with. And everyone seems to lean towards Gluster FS. And now Gluster FS is, if you're familiar with like NFS storage and network shares and stuff like that, similar sort of um, concept. I just believe Gluster FS has encryption and whatnot. So it's a bit more secure on that front. So what this is allowing us to do is rather than relying on the storage on, you know, you know, you have your containers and your services running, we can't have a volume here uh, and a volume here for the same service. It doesn't quite work. We need one location for these services to refer to for their storage. Let's use a database, for example. We have a database service on one node and a database service on the other node. And that, that you know, they're for the same Nextcloud instance. We need them to refer to a volume that they can both use because the containers, the services can use um, the same volume, right? You can have multiple containers referencing the same volume. So what we will do is use GlusterFS to set up a network share that all of our nodes, our worker nodes can connect to and use. So that's the whole idea of this video. And that's how we use our persistent shared storage is by creating a GlusterFS uh, share on our network that they can all refer to. Right, so uh, if you're not familiar, I have a book stack and this is just pretty much where I document all of the steps and everything I do. So if I'm ever explaining something, you can always come back later and follow along. So let's just give a bit of a, an overview on everything that I'm doing. So we've got, um, we're installing cluster FS and remember it only supports, it's supported on 64 bit systems. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but I just had issues with trying to install it. And from what I read on the documentation, it seems like that's the case. Um, and I am installing this all on Ubuntu 22.04. Uh, so yeah, if you're using something else, then um, you're going to probably have to follow different steps for just installing the packages. Setting up Gluster after that point will probably be the same. And then what we also need to do is just make sure that our host files are set up correctly. So if I just show you on here, if I just do a sudo nano and then go into host, you can see that I've set up all of the... Um, IP addresses to the host names just so that the GFS or Gluster FS can talk to and from uh, our machines. So just make sure you have that in place. Now, of course, you're not going to use the same names like Pi4 Lab and whatever. That's the naming stand scheme I'm going for. It's kind of terrible to be honest, but um, I'm using it for the time being. So yeah, just make sure you're using the correct names for your uh, nodes. And then what we need to do is we need to pull down the repository so that we can actually install Gluster FS. So we need to pull down this app repository. Right here. So let's add that repository. So we'll come here, paste it in and hit enter. So you can see that we're using Gluster FS 10 here. So this is the latest version at the time that I'm recording this video. Um, but if you need to change the version for whatever reason, uh, you know, if it's later on or whatever, you should just be able to uh, increment that value to the latest version. So also you can see here uh, at the top, so these here, I know I haven't got it. I need to make sure I add a note here that this needs to be run on all of your machines that are part of this environment, right? So anything that's going to be utilizing cluster FS, not just the host machine that's going to be creating the volume, anything that's also going to be utilizing that volume, you need to run these commands on. So I've already done it on the um, these two Raspberry Pis. The Alzum, which is actually supplying the volume, uh, that's where I'm running these steps through. So again, 
I'm only going to do it once, but I have done it on the other ones already. So once we've uh, pulled that package, what we can do is we can just do an update just to make sure that the repos are all up to date. Great. And now we can actually install GlusterFS. So let's install this. Again, I just want to make a note. Please make sure that um, you're where it's saying that, you know, this command is only run on the host machine or uh, to run it on all nodes that you follow that. Otherwise, you might hit some hiccups. Also, if you do hit any kind of problems or you get stuck at any point, just leave a comment below and I'll, I'll try to help you as best as I can. So that should have given us GlusterFS now. So what we can do is we can uh, enable Gluster the service. So GlusterFS and then um, we'll start it and whatnot. Enable that. Great. Cool. So... Now, if we read this here, so we now we need to pair the node. So if we think about it, we've got our Alzim and we've got our two Raspberry Pis. They all have Gluster uh, FS installed, right? They can all talk to each other via their host names. So now what we need to do is we need on the host machine, we need to pair them into like a pool, right? So what we'll be saying is, hey, Alzim server, there's two Raspberry Pis out there uh, that we need to pair them in uh, under the cluster pool. Let's do that, right? Um, so we need to do that. And we only need to run this on the host machine. So what we will do, so we'll go into there, into the super user, and then now we can run this. So this command here is cluster pair probe, and we are specifying the two nodes that I want to connect into the pool, right? So, and they're called Pi4Labo1 and Pi4Labo2. So these aren't any surprise because these are the host names that I'm using up here. So make sure you're not just copying these commands and pasting them in because this will not work for you. You need to make sure that these host names are the hosts that you're wanting to connect to in your environment, okay? I should essentially be able to run this and it should be able to hit those two Raspberry Pis and since I'm running GlusterFS as well, it should create a pool. So let's see what happens. And as you can see there, it's probed it and it's been a success. So now um, we should be able to do a Gluster pool list. And we can see that they are all nicely connected. And we can check this as well. So if I go to my other Raspberry Pi here and do a sudo uh, Gluster pool list now remember we haven't run any commands on here except for installing cluster fs right because that's something i've done previously if i hit enter here we can see that this is also yep it's saying it's connected to that pool which is awesome and that'll be the same for the other raspberry pi as well and again we can check that so sudo cluster pool list and there you go you can see that it's all happy so everything's talking to each other let's continue down the instructions and see what we need to do now so what we need to do is create a file path for where the volume is stored. And this is on all the machines. So the way this works, and I'm still kind of trying to wrap my head around it because um, just for reference, we create this file path here, which is where we mount the volumes to, right? The cluster volumes. But then when it comes to actually working within those volumes, right? We mount that to... A, to the mount path here, which I'll get to in a minute. So we're dealing with two different kind of mounts, um, but there's only one we actually work with. So what we need to do is on all of our machines, on all of our nodes, we need to make sure we have this directory. So I already have that all set up. So if I just exit out of here and just do an ls um, of cluster, you can see I've already set this up and you need to make sure it's all set up on all the rest of your nodes within your environment. And what happens then, is that we're going to create, and now that we only run this on the host machine, as you can see here, we're gonna create a cluster volume, and I'm gonna call it staging GFS with three replicas. And what that's saying is this volume on our, will be on Alzim, Pi4Labo1, and Pi4Labo2, and on this path here, which is cluster volumes. You can call it whatever you like, but this is kind of what I'm going with here. So that's where that volume is going to be mapped. So if I copy this and paste that in and hit enter, we're all good. We can see the volume has been created and now all we need to do is start the volume to be able to access the data. So if we grab this command here and paste that in, we can just do pseudo cluster volume start staging GFS and hit enter and that is all created. So these commands here, again, we're just run on the host, but now we're coming down here that this needs to run on all the machines. 
So let me kind of just explain what's happening in this set of um, commands here. First off, what we're doing is we're, we're creating a mount, right? And we're mounting the staging GFS volume to the mount directory on our machines, okay? And this lives in the FSTAB for the reason of that when we restart our nodes, when we restart our nodes, that that mount of our cluster volume lives on mount okay and that's automatically mounted man i've used mount a lot in that sentence but i hope that makes sense because without it if i didn't have it in the s tab when our nodes restarted it wouldn't automatically mount it and would have to manually do it uh so having it in the f tab means that we don't have to worry about that and then what we'll do is do an actual cluster fs mount here so we're mounting the staging gfs to that path on all of our machines so we have to run this command on all of our machines and then what we're going to do is set the ownership of the mount directory and its contents to root docker we're setting the group that can access this to docker because that's what's going to be accessing it right docker is going to be creating volumes here and whatnot so we're allowing the access there um, and that's for me that's the only group that should be having access to that right is is docker and yeah so what i need to do is I've already added these uh, sdab files to all my machines, but what I do need to do is actually set up the mounts. So let's go ahead and set those mounts up. We'll go sudo, mount that, jump to this one, sudo, mount u, and sudo, mount u. And now if we do a df-h, we can see we have that share, right? We have that um, all mounted. And if we go to the alias and mount, we have nothing there, right? But if I create something, so if I do touch slash mount, uh, I don't know, test one, hit enter. If I've set this up right, we should now see that test one file everywhere. So if I do alias slash mount, we can see test one in there, right? And now if I do alias mount here, we can see test one there as well. And alias forward slash mount, we can see test one there as well and vice versa if i make a file here so touch mount and this is from a uh, lab 01 oh i need pseudo permissions pseudo there we go ls and mount we can see uh, lab 01 come here lab 01 lab 01 so we now have that shared persistent storage across all of our workers right so now for example when we go to create a Docker service, a Docker Swarm service, we can now specify the volume path on the host machine to be forward slash mount. Uh, and then we could have it as, I don't know, like nextcloud underscore DB. And that would be the volume for our database. And that's where it would live. And then no matter where on what node our uh, nextcloud database was on, it would always be referencing that same location for its volume, right? So that's now how we have our shared persistent storage. So that's pretty much it for this video. I'm just going to make sure I keep it short, easy to follow. And then in the next episode, what we're going to do is actually start deploying services and utilizing the share that we've just deployed, right? But being able to break it up into segments means that we can, it makes it easier to follow as well, especially if you are following along, that you can understand one, setting up the swarm, Two, setting up the storage. And then if you've got any troubles or whatnot there, I can help you work it out. And then three, setting up and deploying the services, right? And so we're not overlapping um, a lot of these things. It's just, we can make sure that we progress through this uh, in a nice uh, orderly fashion. Um, but that's pretty much it uh, for setting up your storage and the f getting it ready for Swarm. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, um, anything you want to point out that I might have done wrong or there's a better way of doing it, please let me know. Yep, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.